Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 41 of the Road to Glory with Circle Bruges. We are here ready to go in the seventh round of the cup. Since you last saw us against Genk, it's been a bit of a rocky road. We lost 3-0 in the league to our rivals who we're playing now. We then got absolutely battered by Chelsea at the bridge and then we responded with a 1-0 win over Antwerp. So a few big games uh, to go through in this episode. We've got obviously the rivals again in the cup away from home and then we've got Ajax away from home at the... Amsterdam, uh, Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam, I should say, um, to round out the Champions League group stage, which we sit second in at the moment. Um, big opportunity for us to go through. We are qualified, so you know we'll see the draw in this episode as well. I've made a change to the system as well. We've gone a little bit asymmetrical, so I just thought everything was a little bit linear um, at, you know, at that time. So what I've decided to do is go with the winger further forward to help support the strikers and then also move the DM on this side of the pitch just to sort of help out in these areas because Leandro will sort of shift in and make it like a very 4-3-3, you know, 4-2 shape. Um, I haven't really seen enough of Kuaku getting in LaFlo's way, so I'm going to look out for that in this game, but this is what we're going to go with. So big, big game here for us. We haven't got out of this stage of the cup for a while I think this would be our third year if we don't because we've played Anderlecht at this point in the last two years so really want to go and try and have a bit of a cup run I know that we're running on fumes a little bit with the amount of games that we're playing we're actually a 4-1-4-1 which is an interesting shape I don't see Bruges use this very often but they do have a new manager so that's uh, a difference from when we played them last time because their manager uh, actually took the Norwegian uh, job, the national job. So you never know. It could be um, a big thing for us. They might uh, drop off the face a little bit because they're changing system. 4141 has been one of those systems that I've always actually been intrigued by. Um, I've never actually used it in FM, but I've always thought potentially could use it. But so far, no highlights here um, going into this game, which is surprising because we're literally at half time now and we haven't had a highlight, which... Doesn't make a whole lot of sense in a cup game, but I'm going to pump the fist. Um, we owe uh, what happened last time, and hopefully we can see a highlight in the second half here. Otherwise, we're putting on extra time. Um, Anderlecht look like they're doing quite well there. Two new up in their game. Stanley Age against Ghent is a big one as well. So it looks like two of the bigger dogs are going to be out of the tournament. Chelly is dying, and so is Simmons. So on the left, I'm going to go with Toure. And then on this right wing, we're going to go with Vicente. And then at that centre mid spot, we're going to go with Fareed. So wouldn't mind us actually seeing a highlight. That'd be nice. Um, hopefully, it's our highlight, though. Pretty even game based on the stats. And here we go. It's a highlight for Club Bruges, which is dealt with. Bello takes off. So he should have support from Robson Vicente as well, higher up the pitch. And away goes Bello. Can we find something? Ball into Kuwaku. I can see what he's trying to do there. And that's that you know, movement there from Leandro, who's playing in that fullback role for us in this game. He sort of steps into that midfield. It's Fareed. It's 1-0. There we go. We needed that goal. Fareed from the central midfielder area steps up. Toure from that deeper left mid roll picks up the ball from Leandro. And there we go. That is a huge moment for us in this cup run. Toure gets by one. Great cut back into Fareed Bukhari, who's come on for Javi Simmons. And here's an opportunity for Club Bruges over the bar. Now, we've got a few guys on yellow cards there. I'm going to take Stepanovic off for Dewitty. And that is our three changes. So we've got to sort of see the game out now. I'm going to go positive. Maybe we'll see if we get a second goal here, we'll go positive. Bello, good ball. Vicente, see how he's a lot higher than Toure. Like Toure arrives later, but Vicente gives us that direct ball and they scored again. He's played two games for us in this system and he scored two goals. And I just like his starting. Like this is what you need to acknowledge. I don't know. You, want, you can't even see Toure. So see where Toure is there. Vicente, that's Kuaku there, I reckon. Bello, I know. That's, is that Vicente there? So let me click on him. I think it's Vicente there initially, yeah, it is. So it's Vicente playing that ball initially. And then you can see the difference here. So Toure's already dropping into the space to try and be an option, where Vicente's there ready to get in behind. That's why I want Vicente there. It gives us the extra out ball that we just haven't had in this system. We've been very reliant on going through the middle. 
So I'm very, very happy with that role change and to go a little bit more asymmetrical. I haven't seen a highlight where it's really cost us with the DM and the inverted wing back getting in each other's way. So, so far, so good from the boys. Here we go, Montiel. Can we just hold on here? Love a clean sheet again in this new adjusted system. It's Nassi Unavar at the back. What a finish by Nassi. Not what you want to see. Um, I feel like Kuwaku just got beaten there one-on-one. -on -one. Nassi is a quality player. Let's have a look at that again. So Lupe, it's just a big switch ball as well. Like, I don't think you know anything tactically is going to change anything there, and that's a good finish at the near post. Maybe Oman should do better, but... Can we hold on here? It's been a pretty competitive game. Five minutes of added time. There's time for a highlight, but there isn't going to be a highlight. We walk away. We are through to the next round of the cup. We needed that to get a bit of revenge back on Club Bruges after they beat us in the last uh, league game we played them in. Anderlecht won 3 1. Stan Liege win 1 0. So Cella Roya out. AA Ghent are out. Ustend are out. We've got an opportunity here. I reckon from our cup draw, who do we have? We get, yeah, Racing Club uh, here who are an amateur team. Who, who'd who they knock out? Let's look at our pro team. There you go. They've come up this year. They won on penalties. So we get a pretty um, favorable quarterfinal draw against Racing Club uh, in the next stage of the cup. So... Sit tight, guys. I'm going to update you on the Ghent game, and then we're going to get into the Ajax game and the Champions League knockout stage. Welcome back to YouTube. We are here with the last group game, group stage game of the Champions League against Ajax in the Johan Cruyff Arena. JS reckons we're going to win 4-2. This has been what's happened since the cup game. We beat Ghent 4-0 which was quite nice as well. Rossi scoring a double, Luis and Vicente scoring two. System looks quite good. The board have said that they're going to give us 19 million pounds to spend this January. So we are going to have a bit of a splash uh, in the next stream going into the January transfer window. So I will update you on that. But after this game, we will have a bit of a discussion about who we're going to get in the next round of the Champions League because it should be the draw. We've got a few suspensions and things to worry about. So Adam is injured for a few weeks. Um, Stepanovic is suspended for this game. Um, we've also got Vicente suspended for this game as well. So the team looks a little bit different. So Oman, Kuwaku, I just want to see. Conan's not really. I'm going to try and rest Conan for this game. So we're going to go Dewitty, Chell, and Leandro. So it's a bit of a rotated defense. McNulty has that DM role with Xavi Simmons with Yuri Uccelli on the left. I'm not going to do that, actually. I'm going to play Toure on the left with McNeil, who on the as a right winger, it's not his favorite role, but as a winger on attack, he does look quite good. It's just the crossing. Other than that, his stats are very, very good. He likes to get forward whenever possible and runs with the ball. We might need to get rid of that trait, maybe, but... It should open up some space for other players. So we've got plenty of quality on the pitch. We've got Raz and we've got Rossi. I'm going to play Bello as well. Good opportunity for him to get some minutes in the Champions League under his belt. So let's get into this game. Very, very excited to see who we get in the knockout stage of the Champions League as it is only our first time in the Champions League. Pau Lopez, we recognize Eddie Alvarez, we recognize... And that's about it. It was a decent Ajax team. I know we played well against them uh, when we played them at home. But obviously playing away from home in the Champions League is quite different. So mostly the form's been pretty good. It is a packed out stadium. They're playing 4-3-3, which is more like Ajax. When we played them last time, they played that 5-3-2. It didn't even feel like we were playing Ajax because it was so uncommon for them to not be playing 4-3-3. But here we go. They've found a runner on the outside of the box here. We don't want to concede this early in chill with a huge challenge against uh, Mateus Enrique. That is massive. And here we go. Can we find something? Ball in was well dealt with. As Mateus Enrique once again picking up the ball in space. We need to win this ball and then go on the attack. And unfortunately, we could not find Rossi there. So I don't even know who their fullbacks are. JS is saying they have a right back on the left. So they might be playing with an inverted wing back and then more like a Mazala as one of their midfield roles. But here we go. It's Gaeta who did drop in there. Um, we'll try to watch his movement too to see what they're going to be doing. It is Alvarez playing at centre-back as well. And here we go. Can we just 
clean up the ball. We do. We find Kuaku, who finds Javi Simmons. What a ball towards Andre Rossi against Pau Lopez. We need to be converting those types of chances. Can't afford too many of them to not go in. As Chelsea do go 1-0 up against Sporting, we find young Marlon Bello who hits McNeil. Bello oh, trying to find Toure. I don't mind that from the boys. And we are up and away. So, so far, four shots to one. Both teams have had one shot on target, though. And we're looking all right. We're looking pretty good. I like having this winger further up the pitch because it gives us a real sort of out ball. Um, they're normally making that run off the last shoulder a bit wider against the fullback, too. So, we do tend to see them get really involved in the play. Obviously, off, here, off a set piece here, we should see McNeil streaming forward on the far side. It is Bello, though, who takes off. He finds Rossi. Rossi scores for us. Give him a C, senor. He has been banging the goals in for us this season. He is JS's man. JS recommended that we went to Uruguay and Colombia. We found Bello and we found Rossi and the two young strikers combined together to give us the lead in Amsterdam. There it is. Look at the uh, average ratings we're getting from these boys as well. We're playing some really good football. They are playing some really good football and we are well on our way to seeing who we've got in the Champions League knockout stage. Sporting, if they could somehow get a draw against Chelsea at the bridge, that would be absolutely fantastic for us. Uh, because then we could finish top of the group. But I think second might be where we're at this season, which isn't a bad thing. For us to only lose one game in the Champions League group stage with the group that we've had would be fantastic. As Rossi goes through one more time, we're going to give him another C, Senor, because Rossi deserves to hear the C, Senors, even though he's Italian. And this is the type of football we want to play. Good little intricate passing from the boys. Look at that, we're both on 15 points as well. We're just not going to catch them because of the... Um, game that we played against and we got absolutely battered in. They absolutely dismantled us at the bridge. Now, Xavi Simmons is struggling. I am going to bring Yuri Uccelli on. I'm not going to bring Fareed Bukhari on. And McNulty is struggling. So we'll bring Ikic on in that DM in that DM role. And here we go. JS is saying, come on the boys. We are playing some of the best football. I was talking about this with the stream before. Other than sort of the end of the Marseille save, this is probably the best football we've ever played in any save um, that we've either recorded or done on stream. I just feel like just the football we play, Rossi, Hattrick, we're not going to play the Si Senor again for Rossi. Just kidding. Yes, we are. Rossi deserves to always hear Si Senors when he's scoring European hat-tricks. And there we go. Look how good. Just look at the movement, though. That's, you know, inverted fullback, DM on support, winger on attack. Like, the rolls just work so well. They just, it's, it's, so the system is so fluid. That's what I like about this system is that it's, it's not just lines of players trying to work the ball up. It's mixing and matching. It's good runs. That's a great ball across the defense, though. That's a great ball from Gaeta. Far out. I almost want to see that again, to be perfectly honest. They do skip by one challenge there. Get the ball back out wide. They've got a heavy overload on that right-hand side. And what a ball between three defenders. Hey, I'll give Ajax that. If they're going to score goals like that, good on them. You know, they had two shots on target. That's their second shot on target for the whole game. They've sort of mixed up a few things there. They're playing a very basic 4-3-3 too. It's just center mid rolls and full back rolls. But here comes Rossi dropping in deep. Should have options to go out this way. Chiel tries to find Rossi's run. Toure, can we find the run of Rossi? We do. Rossi, does he get his fourth? Rossi gets his fourth of the game with 15 to go. Toure is going to come off for Yuri Uccelli now. And it's Andrea Rossi, the Italian stallion, who's made his runs really well timed there as well with the defense on the other side of the box. Great finish into that side netting off the post. And what a performance here in Amsterdam. 4-1 on the night with 14 minutes to play still. We are in a really good position. And what I like from this system is it does defend pretty deep and pretty well. So you can see... We've still got um, our boy here defending pretty deep as well in Bello McNeil as that winger on attack striding forward. And that's why I want the winger on attack. You can see why. We're getting another C, Senor. You can see why, though, because you can look at the positioning of where where he starts his run. There's Chelly, who's fresh. McNeil started the game. He's miles ahead on the pitch. He just As soon as we win the ball, he's on his bike, and that's what I like about having him on the winger as an attack role um, and the duty being attacked because it's just... 
he, he, he gets involved in the game more and we've set the team up so we do want to play through our right wingers more as well so 5-1 it pretty much just eradicates the goal difference that we lost against Chelsea which is you know important because we did lose that game 5-1 so those games now sort of cancel each other out if we can get a sixth goal here it'd be massive McNeil ball in Shelley offside but you know that's oh I was going to say they didn't take the goal away till very late now, there's a big gap there between Paul Lopez and his defence, and that's what we've been able to pick out. It's Bello who finds Chelly. Can he find the run of someone with his quality? Chelly, can he get a ball across the box? I don't know what he's doing there. He's trying to win a corner. What a result. 5-1 away from home against Ajax. Can we make it 6? McNeil apparently pushed someone, I think. And that should be game, set, and match. So we have turned up big time. What a response. That's probably the big thing. You know, going 5-1 down away from home against Chelsea. That was, you know, pretty um, embarrassing. That's definitely offside. And that is full time. So Rossi scores four. We have 22 shots with 12 on target. And absolutely dominate Ajax. I'm proud. And let's move on to the group, uh, the group stage, the knockout stage draw. We do finish second, which is disappointing. Literally dead even with Chelsea. They beat us on head-to-head -head because we beat them 1-0. They beat us 5-1. We couldn't do much more in that group. Finish on 15 points. Ajax do not even get a point. And I find that absolutely crazy. So can we have a look? Where? How do I know when the draw is? Let's go competitions. The draw for the Champions League. Let's go stages. Let's go... I don't know. That's all All that stuff. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll sim forward until the draw, and then you'll see us there. Welcome back, YouTube. We are ready to go for the Champions League knockout stage. We're not seeded because we came second, but since you saw us against Ajax... Doo -doo -doo -doo, we just beat STV 2-0. Yuri Uccelli getting a goal and Stepanovic scoring just on half time. So we've kept the good form going. We've lost, literally lost two games all year. Bruce, Chelsea, back-to-back. -back. Doesn't matter. Things happen. We get a real good run of games here now. So cup quarterfinal, easy game, easy game, easy game, easy game, tough game, easy game, tough game, tough game. And then the end of the season for us is going to be pretty difficult. So... Um, going to be interesting, but let's make sure we don't continue and let's go into the draw. So the seeded teams that we can get are Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, Ch can't get Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, PSG and Juve. So uh, not ideal. The first team out is Spurs and they get Dortmund. So I think they're going to draw Atletico Madrid, get Liverpool, Real Madrid, get Man City. So, we still can't get Chelsea. So, we're getting Barcelona, Man U, Juve, or PSG. Here it is. Circle Bruges, get... Dun, dun, dun. Barca. Oh, Jesus. Bayern get PSG. Berlin get Man United. Inter get Chelsea. Porto get Juve. Look, realistically, out of all those seeded teams, there, were, there wasn't an easy one. It didn't matter. We are taking on Barcelona in the round of 16, managed by Massimiliano Allegri. They've got Victor Ossiman. They've got Pedersen, who is a Danish absolute wonder beast. Kobzar as well. Decent player from the Ukraine. This is going to be tough. They've got Vlasic de Jong. I don't know who this guy is. Orkan Kochu, who looks decent. And then they've got Joe Gomez, Theo Hernandez. For me, it's more about like who these teams don't have. So they've got Alarcon here. Is he Barca prodigy? He is. I feel like he's a real player though, which he is. He looks unreal. He's valued at 57 mil though. Who do they have here that just doesn't make the team? Not really many players here. Paco, they've got Jeremy Pino, who's back in three days. They've got Makoku, who's... Oh my god, that's a team. They've got Makoku and Yeremi Pino as well that aren't in the team, which is a bit interesting. So this is going to be very, very tough. What I'm going to do is let's quickly just sim a day. Um, let's see where these games uh, fall because I think our next episode is going to be a very Barca-heavy episode. So this is taking a lot longer than anticipated to sim just like a couple hours. But look, I think on reflection, you probably wanted. Dortmund, but other than that, 
I mean, Dortmund's still pretty good, but obviously without Makoku, it would have been nice. Um, this Barcelona team is just absolutely stacked. So let's have a look at the schedule. Um, where are we? That's scouting. Schedule. So we've got... We've got some time still. Um, and we get the January transfer window, which is huge. So we've, we've probably got to run a game to you that we're not going to see. So what I'll do is... I will come back in time for the Anzalek game and then we'll play the first leg of Barcelona and then we'll probably do Gank Barcelona as a double there. So three days apart, that is massive for us. But if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you come over to Twitch at Paulie29 to catch all the action live and we'll see you in the next one.